Hi guys, it's Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a back to school advice video. This is the third time I've filmed it. So it's a sixth form slash A-level slash college advice video because sixth form is the place you go once you've finished high school in England. So you finish high school at 16 and you go to sixth form college or do an apprenticeship afterwards for two years, which then determine grades to go to university. It's just the British system. It's confusing, I know. Um, so yeah, I have just, oh I've got my torch on here. I just finished my first ever year of A-level, well my year 12 year, I'm going into year 13 which is my final year. In America you call it senior year I think, grade 12 maybe, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm in my final year and I know a lot of my audience is in, about to go in sixth form or maybe a year after. So I thought to film this video just to be helpful because I wish I had something like this when I was going into sixth form. Um, I've had some questions on Instagram which I'm going to work into my advice and I'm going to try to give as much advice as I can and yeah so let's go. I took history, English literature, government and politics and photography. Um, so yeah I took them all. Um, start of September. Not all sick forms do four, some do three options. Mine just did four. Um, all of them were the new AS so all of mine I have to sit exams at the end of year 13, except from government and politics was 50% AS, so I sat 50% of it this summer. Um, I sat all of them AS this summer, which some of them were my mocks and politics was real. And then these grades that I'm going to get this summer are what unis will see and make offers on, which will be the most likely the grades I'll get next year as well. Um, so yeah, they are important. Obviously, one of them is 50%, not all of them are, which is annoying, but it's just what we've got to deal with isn't it um so yeah so firstly sick form is very different to high school um it's kind of it's weird because if you state your sick form like me also may i just add a disclaimer this advice is based solely on my experience in my own sick form it could be completely different i know not all sick forms are the same i'm just stating so in my sick form person per personally um it kind of felt like we were the leftovers from the people of high school because a lot of people leave at the end of year 11 and it kind of does sometimes feel in sick form like we're the leftovers in like the most non-awful way possible if that makes sense um so yeah everyone you kind of just kind of it sounds weird but you kind of just got to get along with everyone like you just do because it's quite small especially my sick form's really small you just get on with everyone it's just how it is in there's so much less drama than in year 11 oh my god it was ridiculous like you've just got to mature because you're you are young adults and teachers will respect you as young adults um so yeah it's less strict you get more individuality but with and this independence you get your own responsibilities so within this responsibility you have to be organized with your stuff and keep on top of the work go to your teachers if you don't understand that's the biggest piece of advice i can give because at the end of the day you are going to have to sit those exams no matter how long you leave it, you are sitting that exam. You've signed up for it, that's what you signed up for. So you have to go see the teachers, or else you, even if it's a stupid question, there's no stupid question at A-level, because if it's gonna help you, the teachers will not judge. It's A-levels, ask whatever question you want. Even if it seems silly to you, just ask it. You just, honestly, having the, having the dialogue with a teacher is so important when it comes to A-levels. So that's all I can stress enough. It's your responsibility to ask for help. No one's gonna ask for help for you. Maybe in high school they would, but it is your responsibility now. You're a young adult, so you need to sort that out yourself. Organization, set up a system, maybe have a little basket in your room or a section for each subject. That's what I'm gonna definitely do this September. I didn't do that last year and I really wish I had because you get so much paper, you need folders. I can't stress enough how much you need folders for each subject, even maybe two for each subject because courses are split into different topics. There's so much content. Content. So yeah, that's really all I can say on responsibility wise. You know, you have to be mature about this. It's hard work, but you can get the grades if you want. The difference between GCSE and A-level, a lot of people say it, it's crazy. It is drastic. I'm not gonna lie, it's crazy. Yeah, it is. Um, there's a massive difference. You kind of feel like a cat jumping for a roof or a cat jumping for a sofa and falling. Like you think you can do it but you can't and that is expected you know no teacher is going to expect you to come in on the first day of starting your eight levels and to get 25 out of 25 and a 25 marker it's just impossible you can't do it it's they are ridiculously hard but you just learn it's how you learn you probably thought GCSEs were hard when you first started 
because they were like you were going from year nine to GCSE it's hard you just you adapt to it you learn and it just becomes second nature to you um so please when you're going in sick form there is a lot of work when you first get started like I got essays in my first week but do not feel disappointed when you get six out of 25 on your first 25 marker you know six out of 25 it's six marks it's something compared to the little knowledge you know at the start of your course like that's a lot so please don't stress out too much like within the period of September to Christmas don't stress out too much in that period I think it's after Christmas is where you really have to work hard to get the grades but just try your hardest and just listen all I can emphasize as much as I can is listen um so yeah just work hard and listen and do not stress if you get low marks at the start because it's expected teachers understand you're doing a levels that 98 percent of them will have been in the position you were in doing a levels every teacher in your school will know how hard an a level is even just doing one a level is hard you know it's just hard and i found this with history um so this is my personal experience with a levels i haven't done history since year nine i was 13 when i took my gcse history exam i got an a star which was amazing for a 13 year old to get an a star in gcse um, I was super proud of it, you know, I'd always held that throughout when I was doing year 10 and 11, I was like, I've already got an A star in GCSE history. So when it came to A levels, I was without doubt I was going to do A level history, you know, I got that GCSE in it. And I got there and I hadn't done history for three years, you know, I forgot. And I was still, you'll find this with a lot of your subjects, you will be stuck in the GCSE mindset, you'll be stuck with the PQE layout, you'll be stuck with a lot of your GCSE mindset. And it's really hard to get out of, I found it really hard and I just couldn't get out of it with history. You know, I was really lagging behind with the class. Um, I went to speak to my teachers because again, I can't emphasize enough how how important it is. Just go speak to your teachers, you know. I had a bit of a tear in my eye, I'm not gonna lie. But I just went and spoke and we just, we figured out what was best for me and we just, we just worked out that for me, what was best was dropping history just because I was really struggling. When it came to Christmas time, that was just the part of me is like I can't do this you know on top of my over A levels it's too much I'm spending so much time trying to catch up with class with history that I'm lagging behind on my over A levels and it's not fair because you've got to take like oh, as much as I love history in general I just couldn't do the A level you have to you have to sometimes make decisions which are hard and that if you really want to do a subject but you just really can't do it like you just you've got to make choices which are going to benefit you and that you know you can do well in you know but don't do something easy for the sake of it because you know it's easy do something that you're going to enjoy because you have to enjoy it. you're doing it for two years so yeah i dropped history so now early because i was going to drop history at the end of the year but then i thought i'm just going to drop it early because then i can spend more time studying for my other three for when i do my as exams this summer so i'm left with english lit photography and politics love them absolutely love all three like i can't express how much I love them I couldn't imagine doing anything else um so yeah I'm left with those three now <laughs> it's good please speak to your teachers I did and it just helps so much and it just builds a kind of a bond with your teachers which helps especially with A-levels revision um so obviously in GCSE you will learn how your revision style is everyone is different everybody is different personally for me I'm a visual learner what I do with my vision, I did this throughout all of GCSE and all of last year with my AS exams, is I wrote out stuff with colours, you know, pictures, um, I did big posters and then I just learned it off by heart and then I redid the poster from memory, you know, like that game you used to play in like year eight where you had to run up and guess how much, guess like the poster and then write it out. That's just how my mind works and I do that over and over again until it just becomes second nature. It's just a way how I do it and that's how I've been doing it. I started doing that in like about, I probably started revision kind of October time when I kind of got into my course and I knew what I was doing because it does take time to kind of like learn about your course and actually understand fully what you're going to be doing over the year, it does take time so don't expect to like understand straight away what you're doing, it's fine, don't worry about that. Um, October time I started just like slowly getting into revision, like maybe doing two or three nights a week and then just doing extra reading on the side and then when it came to April, I kind of had this thing with me, and again, this is my own revision technique, you might not do this, you might have started the whole year, you might not do this at all, but I had this thing about a month before my exam start, I have to go all heads on, 
So I did that um, starting at April half term Easter holidays. My first exam was May the 17th, like written exam, because I didn't class photography as a written exam. It wasn't, it was an art, like kind of an art exam. So my first written exam was May the 17th. And I think I probably started um, with a bit like hardcore revision by April 17th. And it's just where I do it every day, like for hours on end. Obviously I have my breaks. If you want a separate um, video on actual revision separately, I can do that, comment down below. Um, yeah that's just how I work and then it all just goes in because I feel like if I do that over the year I forget it so I just do it in small bits and then lead up to like a big last leg if you get me so yeah that's just my vision but just make sure you're constantly doing it just keep up to date with your work that's all I can stress is just keep up to date do not leave stuff for later because it will come back to haunt you it really will and again like I said you've got to sit that exam you've got to do that piece of work eventually you just do it get it over with and do it with A-levels people relate A-levels to stress it brings on a lot of stress I'm honestly not going to lie it really does stress you out you know you have times and you're like I just can't I can't do it um, it's fine to have the moments everybody has them do not feel isolated having those moments it's fine I do like sometimes you just need to have the moments stressing out like fine but you need to not overpower yourself especially when you're first starting A levels I know people that just go straight in heads first and it's just not like that you need to wean yourself into it and eventually you'll get yourself a routine do not stress out too much please I can't I can't stress enough I know I always say that but I can't do not stress out too much um and just make sure you have a social life you know don't forget go out party drink dance spend time with your family spend time with your friends go to the cinema Free up your weekends, like ever over a weekend, free up for the whole weekend, have sleepovers, you know, don't forget your social life because that's so important because otherwise you get so isolated in A-levels that you become the A-level, if you get me, like you just kind of lose who you really are, you just become head to toe Abby Jones A-level. Don't become your subject, it sounds crazy, but because you're honestly, it's all you do it all day every day, because you only have free, it's literally always on your mind you're always doing bits and pieces of work for that subject don't become your subject don't forget about everything else you know have your hobbies on the side go to clubs please be at spa uh, uh, spare time to do this it's i can't express how important it is you will have free periods use your free periods wisely do work i am guilty for not always doing that and i think everyone is you know when you first start year year 12 you can be like oh, free periods yeah you're like you're gonna relax and chill and to be honest you're not going to have a lot of work when you first start in the first month so you won't have much to do in your free period so it's fine but use them wisely get homework done and then you can have your own time at home it's so much better than that than just sitting for an hour and doing nothing and then having to do it all when you get home do it when you have the opportunity to do it so again don't become your subjects but then at the same time i think with a level you do them so much you begin to really understand your interests um I really began to love reading again because obviously English literature, you really find who you are, it sounds crazy, but since doing politics I've become so interested in human rights and politics and it just kind of, it sounds cringy as it sounds, I've kind of found my place, like I understand what I'm kind of meant to do, if that sounds weird, because I'm so passionate about it, you know, over this past year I've become so involved like outside, like with my lo yokel, uh, yokel, local Labour Party pressure groups, um, like amnesty, rallies, you know, I've been to everything, I've got interviewed by Sky News, um, very cringy indeed, but yeah, just, you're just getting involved and definitely get involved with things to do with your subjects outside of schools, like if you're doing physics, I know a friend, shout out to Rachel and Erin, who went to like, um, a physics kind of talk, go to like talks and things outside of school, that had to do with your A-levels because it will really spark up your interest and it will look amazing on your personal statement next year. So go to things outside of school that have to do with your subject. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like a video on revision advice and if you'd like a video on like UCAS tips and personal statements and stuff, anything else, anything you want advice on, comment down below and I'll try to do one if I can. So thank you so much for watching. Comment down below what year you'll be going into in September or grade, wherever you're from in the world. Comment down below where you're going, like what year group you're going into. If you're going in sick form, let me know if this advice was helpful. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh my God, I'm knackered. <laughs>